Welcome to Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the significance of completion of common station. Our road safety reminder on the Young Street Smart Sports and Centers on the proper way of joining traffic in a rotunda or roundabout. This week's Pine to Pair shall be about the importance of wearing seatbelts. Showcase this week shall have the pickup from Ford, the Ranger Wild Track 4x2 AT. While for race weekend, we'll have the highlights of the 2022 National Slalom Series. All these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management as well as developments in the automotive industry are on this week's edition of Motoring Today. Join us! Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, Race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition. So you too can race yours. Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. The MMDA added a new twist to its modified coding scheme to ease traffic on EDSA, but it also issued more exemptions to the scheme. Depending on the end of their license plates, light trucks are now banned from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. on the portion of EDSA from Magallanes in Makati to North Avenue in Quezon City. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority defined light trucks are those with gross capacity of 4,500 kilograms or below and or have six or more tires. They can either be closed vans or have open payload area. Following the system of the Unified Vehicular Volume Reduction Program, light trucks with license plates ending in 1 and 2 are banned on Mondays, 3 and 4 on Tuesdays, 5 and 6 on Wednesdays, 7 and 8 on Thursdays, and 9 and 0 on Fridays. Other vehicles are banned on the same portion of EDSA from 5 to 8 p.m. except in Makati, which bans vehicles in the city from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. following the coding scheme. At the same time, the MMD announced it would exempt transport network vehicle service units and public utility vehicles are exempted from the number coding scheme. Also exempted from coding system are motorbikes and utility vehicles such as garbage trucks and fuel trucks, as well as vehicles carrying essential or perishable goods. The MMD has said persons with disability and senior citizens may also be exempted from the number coding scheme, but they have to apply to get the pass for the exemption. Applicants need to submit a letter of request to be exempted from the OCR of their vehicles and pay 1,000 peso fee. Traffic is expected to get worse and worse as authorities begin to ease COVID-19 restrictions and open up the economy. It will be up to authorities, the MMDA and the local government units in particular, to find ways to mitigate the congestion. The elections may be delaying the continued implementation of the program providing incentives to drivers and transport operators to continue operating under COVID-19 restrictions. 
The Department of Transportation is preparing to implement Phase 3 of the service contracting program which gave incentives to public utility vehicle drivers and operators to continue servicing the public under capacity restrictions prompted by the COVID-19 pandemic. However, even though funding for the program is provided in the General Appropriations Act for the fiscal year 2022, the implementation of Phase 3 of the SCP may be delayed because of an elections ban. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board is awaiting approval of the Commission of Elections for an exemption to implement the program which will ensure efficient and safe operations of PUVs, provide financial support to transport operators or workers, and sustain support to Filipino workers and commuters. Comelic approval is necessary as there is a ban on implementing government-funded projects during the election period. Chairman Martin Delgado III said that once Comelic approves the exemption, the LTFRB will begin implementing the program. Already, the LTFRB is orienting operators nationwide and about the program and asking them to submit documentary requirements as attachments to their service contracts. The SCP provides our drivers and operators regular payouts amid the rising fuel prices and inflation. It will also allow the resumption of the Libring Sakai program not only in Metro Manila but also nationwide. The 7 billion peso allocated for the Phase 3 of SCP has already been released by the Department of Budget and Management to the DOTR which in turn downloaded it to the LTFRB. Under the program, PAV operators and drivers are paid by the LTFRB based on the maximum number of trips per week, with or without passengers and in compliance with performance indicators. PAV operators will also receive a one-time incentive of 5,000 pesos per unit to cover pre-operating costs, while operational incentives will be given weekly. The SCP should help both PUV operators as well as commuters with the continued implementation of the Libring Sakai program. Commuters using the LRT-1 can benefit from its partnership with Global Electric Transport or GET Philippines to provide shuttle services using electric minibuses. Light Rail Manila Corporation, private operator of the LRT-1, is partnering with Global Electric Transport or GET Philippines to provide shuttle service for LRT-1 passengers between the EDSA station and the Manila Bay ASEAN area with designated loading and unloading points along Makapagal Boulevard until the Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange. The shuttle service will use GET's Community Optimized Managed Electric Transport or Comet electric minibuses which can accommodate 30 passengers in its air-conditioned cabin. Comet electric minibuses can travel around 100 kilometers on a full charge and are equipped with onboard cameras, media system, display monitors, internet connectivity, as well as wheelchair slots and retractable electric ramp for persons with disabilities. To avail themselves of the shuttle service, LRT1 passengers must sign up to become members of the LRT1 Riders Club on the Get Pass app available for download from Google Play or the App Store. LRT1 Rider Club members can take unlimited rides on the Comet Shuttle for one day by purchasing a bronze pass for 50 pesos. The silver pass costing 150 pesos will be valid for one week of unlimited rides. The gold pass worth 500 pesos will be valid for one month. The pass can be also used to take rides on Comet buses and other routes within the Get Philippines network. The ESA station to Manila Bay Asiana is just the first phase of the LRT-1 Get Philippines partnership. The next phase will extend the shuttle service to the Pati Central Business District. As a special promotions offer, LRT-1 Riders Club members can avail of free unlimited rides on the Comet Electric Bus through the Get Pass app until April 17, 2022. The LRT-1 GET Philippines partnership follows a global trend towards use of more electric vehicles for personal and public transport. The first day of the month-long free ride offer for all on the MRT-3 saw the rail service setting another milestone. On the first day of the month-long free ride program of the MRT-3, a four-car CKD train was deployed during the early morning peak hour, setting a new achievement for the rail service following the completion of a major rehabilitation and upgrading program. Another four-car train was also deployed during peak after hours of operation. This signals the start of the MRT-3 running four-car trains to enable the commuter rail line to accommodate more passengers. The four-car train set can accommodate 1,576 passengers, the MRT-3 said. The free ride program of the MRT-3 aimed to showcase the improved services of the rail line following the rehabilitation of stations, facilities, tracks, and equipment, as well as the complete overhaul of its trains. It also aimed to regain public confidence in MRT-3 as well as help ease the financial burden of passengers of its rising prices of fuel commodities. The MRT-3 can now run 18 to 22 train sets during peak hours compared to 10 to 15 before the massive rehabilitation program was undertaken. The free ride program will end on April 30, so people should enjoy this while it lasts.
The dream for a common station for the LRT1, MRT3, and the MRT7 is about to come true. Morning Forum examines the status and significance of the project. By this time, the infrastructure for the North Avenue Common Station would have been completed as directed by the Department of Transportation Secretary, Art Togade. Work will have begun on the electromechanical systems and other fixtures and facilities that will allow the Common Station to become operational by the middle of this year. And if Secretary Togade will have his way, this will happen even before the end of President Duterte's term in office. It's been more than 15 years since the NEDA approved the proposal to construct a common station for both MRT3 and the light rail transit line one in Quezon City. By the time the North Avenue common station is finally completed and operational, it will link at least three commuter rail services, the MRT3, the LRT1, and the MRT7. And when the Metro Manila subway project begins operating, it will be the fourth to be served by the common station. The North Avenue Common Station will have 13,700 square concourse area, which will interconnect with four major railway lines, LRT1, MRT3, MRT7, and the Metro Manila Subway Project. Already completed are the station buildings of Area A and Area B or the Atrium. The project's contractor, BF Construction, has assured Secretary Togade that work will continue non-stop to meet the timelines he set in order to have the Common Station operational. Hopefully, as Secretary Togade himself said, while still during the term of President Duterte, the assurance was made during the inspection of the work undertaken at the common station by Secretary Togade. The inspection included a walkthrough of the already completed structures of the common station conducted by Secretary Togade along with Japan Ambassador to the Philippines, Kazuhiko Koshikawa, JICA Chief Representative Aigo Azukizawa, BF Corporation CEO Marides Fernando, and other transport officials and private sector partners. After the walkthrough, Ambassador Koshikawa best expressed the significance of the common station. In the near future, I can change from the MRT3 to the LTRT1 or MRT7 or Metro Manila subway via this common station, and I can go anywhere in a short time period. Needless to say that railway connectivity is indispensable for efficient transport. That's why the opening of this common station will offer a significant level of comfort to use these railways. Once operational, the common station can handle commuter traffic of almost 500,000 daily. People should be enjoying the benefits of the common station by the middle of this year. That is, if plans pan out. But the DOTR has a track record for completing its big ticket projects. That's our morning forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. here on Motoring Today. In line with our lifelong commitment to promote road safety, here is this week's road safety tip in cooperation with Toyota Motor Philippines. When you're about to enter a runabout or rotonda, paunahin muna ang mga sasakyan na kasalukuyan ng tumatakbo dito. When it's already safe to do so, saka ka pumasok. Always be aware of your surroundings at huwag magmadali. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. Haing Chaper is next. Payong Stoper lang kaibigan. Ako si Alejandro Patosa, isang kapwa niyo Stoper. Huwag kalimutang magsuot ng seatbelt sa tuwing kayo ay papasada. Gawing prioridad ang kaligtasan habang namamasada sa pamamagitan ng pagsusuot ng seatbelt. Siguraduhing maayos at gumagana ang iyong seatbelt bago mamasada. Huwag mo rin kalimutang paalalahanan ang pasahero na nakaupo sa harap na magsuot ng seatbelt. 
Tandaan ang paggamit ng seatbelt ay isang tiktibong pamamaraan o pangmanatiling ligtas sa oras na anumang aksidente. Ito po si Alejandro Patosa, payong chopper lang kaibigan mula sa isang kapwa nyo chopper. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsport is next. We start with the latest news and developments. In motorsports news, the 2022 Race Motorsports Club National Slalom Series got off to a hot start at the Robinson Star Mills Pampanga. With Paui Basse of PMMS Rensport edging multiple Slalom King titles, Milo Rivera to the overall best time of day. Howie's best 55.52 run was just 34 hundredths of a second faster than Milo's 55.86 time. Third fastest overall was Stefano Rivera with a 56.07 that dropped Ron Suzon down to fourth with a 57.07 time. Rod Chang came fifth fastest with 57.13. Dr. JB Politan ruled the novice class clocking 59.13, with Austin Sarmiento in second with 63.21, and July Johnson a far third with a 63.86. The 2022 National Slalom Series continues with the second leg on April 10 at Robinson's Antipolo. More in the world of motorsports here on Motoring Today, as we now give you Race Weekend. The 2022 National Slalom Series is off to a great start as they kicked off their first round of the year. Here are the highlights from Robinson Star Mills in Bampanga City. We are here in Robinson Star Mills in Pampanga for the first leg of the National Slalom Series as cars and drivers line up eager to start the season. Well, of course, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, it's been, you know, uh, a break from, from slalom, I think, two years. I mean, there was some invitational races uh, last year in, in 2020, but this, I think, the, for the first time since 2019 that we're having a full season. So I'm very excited and really looking forward to it because, you know, slalom series is a very exciting uh, series. And yeah, I can't wait for, for the season to start. Yes, a slalom series, you know, uh, personally for me, it not just in the discipline of slalom, but it also taught me different techniques and different uh, racing styles when I, that I used in circuit racing and other disciplines. So it's very important, especially for, you know, for kids who want to know how to drive a car fast and in a safe environment. Uh, so it's very important for the racing community. cheerful and always lovely, the point person, the organizer of the National Slalom Series, Ms. Bing Bang Dulce. Hi, Ms. Bing Bang. Hello, good afternoon and welcome to our first leg. 
So what what does it feel like uh, starting off the racing season with a bang here in Robertson Star Mills? It feels great. Parang na mabasa ng enthusiasm within me. Abi ko for the past three years, it's now we're going back with our 12 leg uh, national slalom series. First leg here, right? That's from Robertson Star Mills. So uh, you know everyone was really eager to uh, go out, uh, especially the racers. You know they've been uh, stuck at home. You know, uh, trying to scratch the itch for racing. Uh, can you give us your thoughts on how excited the racers were uh, when they uh, uh, when they signed up for this uh, for this leg? Well, actually, when they came this afternoon, or when I announced the uh, series for next year, they were quite excited because after two years, yeah, finally it's back. Pero ganon pa rin, uh, in spite of our pandemic, not parin ang full uh, participation. Pero we're getting started, and I hope na within the next quarter. We can, we can achieve our goal uh, that naman yung ating participants. And I guess it doesn't only go for slalom racing. It's in all all aspects of, uh, of disciplines. Kaya medyo, ano lang ngayon, struggle, struggle. And uh, God willing, makaangat in the future legs. The most challenging part dito is yung mga corners na nakalayout kasi Medyo pag napasobra ka, possible na dumiretso ka sa uh, mga cold source sa gato. So yun lang, yun lang yun ang ikita ko medyo iingatan namin dito. Sa ngayon, ang pinakamahirap na makakalaban namin dito sila ba? Milo Rivera, Stefano, sila Pawi Base dito. So sila Ron Susan ng Kabanatuan. So magiging challenge to para sa amin. Since we haven't been racing for quite some time now, the grind never stops when you're trying to prepare physically, mentally, of course, when you're trying to condition your body and your mind. It's been a long break, it's been a, been a long hiatus, so you gotta stay consistent, very consistent with your routines in order to be prepared for hectic days like this. We've been racing in these kinds of conditions for the longest time. It's been quite a while since we last raced in such so. I don't think it affects the driving much, but I think it affects how the track conditions are, how the car behaves. So I don't think it's, it's when it comes to the driving, it's really all on the driver now how we prepare for such weather. Well, the track. It's pretty similar to the previous ones. Change things up a bit, the layout, the chickens, the 180s, the 360s, whatnot. But for me, the challenging aspect of this track is, as I said, the condition. It's very dusty, so finding the optimal grip all around is it's pretty inconsistent. So we gotta make the most of every run we have. I would like to invite, of course, everyone to watch the National Slalom Series. Uh, our first leg here is in uh, San Fernando, Pampanga, and our next will be in Robinson's Antipolo. And hopefully you guys can join. It's a great racing and of course it's also with great company. Again, Miss Bing Bang, thank you very much and congratulations and uh, still a good turnout. And we look forward uh, to the next race. Thank you so much. And of course, we'd like to thank Lage We You're always supporting us with our uh, motoring today. And of course, we would like to thank also our uh, Federal Tires and Hancock Batteries. And of course, Robinson Smalls. Lagi natin kasama yan to our events. Yeah, so I hope to see you April 10 at Robinson's Antipolo. Thank you very much. And that does it for our first coverage of the first leg of the National Slalom Series. Be sure to check us out next week for more Race Weekend action.
as we brave the scorching heat of the sun onto the grounds of Robinson Star Mills, it is safe to say that racing is officially back. And that's this week's World of Motorsports. We'll be back after this short break. Suzuki El Tiga. Seven seater in style. Our car of the week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Ford is among the fullest range of pickup trucks, even in its local lineup. This edition of Showcase takes a look at the Ford Ranger 2 liter Wild Track. 4x2 automatic transmission. Ford Philippines has gained a lot of traction in the local pickup truck market by offering a full range of variants from the base model XLPs to the FX Force, the Wild Track, and the Raptor. buyers are offered options with various configurations of comfort and convenience features, exterior look and styling, safety and driver assist tech to suit wants and needs as well as the all-important budget. Among Ford, many pickup options is this Ford Ranger 2L Wild Track 4x2 AT. The latest Wild Track is 5,354mm long, 1,860mm wide, and 1,848mm tall with a 3,220mm long wheelbase and 232mm of ground clearance. As does all Ford pickups, the Wild Track exterior comes across as tough and muscular with grille and cladding all exuding that Ford built tough quality. The Wild Track can be distinguished from its brethren by all LED head lamps, daytime running lamps, front fog lamp, even the puddle lamps are LEDs. Also a Wild Track distinction are the black rear sports bar with what Ford calls the Sabre insert and the roof rails. Interestingly enough, it doesn't come out of the box with side steps. The Wild Track also comes with the tailgate lock and tail lift assist function and the auxiliary 12 volt power outlet on the load box, all not available in its siblings. The Wild Track side mirrors with side turn indicators also power fold and adjust. The windshield wipers also turn on automatically when sensing rain. The 18 inch alloy wheels look sporty, wrapped by 26560 R18 tires. The new Ranger cabin is roomy enough to sit five adults in comfort. You know you're getting into a wild track from the leather upholstery with the unique wild track accents. The steering wheel also comes in leather with stitching. The new 4x2 wild track, however, does not come with power adjustable driver's seat, only found in the 4x4 variant. Driver's seat adjusts six ways, the front passenger four ways. The bench seat and the rear comes with center armrest and fold up function. The new Wild Track already features smart keyless entry with push button start as well as dual color 4.2 inch cluster screens and ambient lighting, illuminated scuff plates. Those who move around with lots of devices needing charging will find the two auxiliary 12 volt power outlets in the cabin and the 230 volt inverter in the rear console. Other comfort and convenience features include dual zone automatic air conditioning, power windows, and electrochromic rear view mirror. The Wild Track infotainment system comes with 8 inch color touchscreen, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto, Bluetooth with phone and audio streaming, Sync 3 with voice activated controls, built in navigation system, USB ports including one mounted on windshield and six speakers. Wild Track 4x2 is powered by a 1996cc single turbo diesel engine that generates 180 PS at 3,500 revolutions per minute and 420 Nm of torque from 1,750 to 2,500 RPM. 
the 10-speed automatic transmission system shifts almost seamlessly in sending the right amount of power and torque called for to the rear wheels of the 4x2 Wildtrak variant. The electric power-assisted steering system on the Wildtrak provides just the right amount of ease and feedback for driving in all sorts of road conditions and traffic situations. The suspension system on the Wildtrak uses double wishbones with pull springs on the front wheels and leaf springs on the rear wheels, standard configuration for pickups meant to carry heavy loads on cargo bed. The brake system also features the tried and tested ventilated front disc and rear drum configuration, as well as anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution. The Wildtrak 4x2 also comes with electronic stability control that includes rollover mitigation and traction control, as well as hill launch assist but not hill descent control. Those not used to driving pickups with no sight lines for the cargo bed find parking quite a hassle, but the Wildtrak comes with front and rear sensors and rear view camera to make parking easier. Also added for safety and security are airbags for driver and front seat passenger, side and curtain airbag, child seat isofix anchorage points, and volumetric burglar alarm system. Overall, the Ford Ranger 2L Wildtrak 4x2 AT is a good option for those looking for a well-outfitted pickup truck in the 1,540,000 peso range. After checking out the specs and prices of the pickups in the market, the next best thing to do is to request a test drive at the nearest dealerships. That's our featured vehicle in this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry-free with Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program, 100% worry-free driving. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. the lead. Welcome back to Motoring Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. The Geely M Grand has made a rather good impression of members of the motoring media following a ride and drive out of Metro Manila to Tagaytay and back. Geely Philippines has been taking members of media in matches to experience the ride and handling as well as comfort and convenience features of its entry to the highly competitive subcompact sedan market. The day-long road trip started out from the Geely North Edsa dealership and taking the Skyway towards MLEX and then the Calax before climbing up the winding roads to the Gaita Highlands. We actually gave a media a uh, test no, or a experience, test drive experience of the all-new GDM Grand. This is the latest model that uh, GD has launched uh, just actually in this March. No? We're very much excited for this model because this is uh, GD's first model to compete no? in the very much competitive subcompact sedan segment. The feedback uh, that we are receiving from, from the media is uh, very much welcome. They like the drive of the M Grand and uh, of course uh, 
the performance on uh, this uh, hilly roads of Tagaytay and uh, yeah, even the highway. Yeah. The Ride and Drive gave the media a chance to experience the two variants of Geely M Grand, the Comfort and the Premium, both powered by a new 1.5 liter gasoline engine generating 102 horsepower and 142 newton meters of torque, added to an 8 speed of continuous variable transmission. The feedback from media buoyed Geely's confidence that the M Grand, packed with features normally expected from bigger cars minus their expensive price, will be quite competitive in the subcompact sedan market. The subcompact sedan segment no, uh, is still the largest in the automotive industry so yeah we feel that it's uh, best for us also to have a model actually in this subcompact sedan segment and in fact uh, for for gd we are a big at least uh, to sell around 2500 for this year and uh, that will actually have us a good market share of this uh, subcompact sedan uh, segment Access Philippines treated members of the media to four fun-filled days of testing its full lineup of the G50 Compact FPV. This is actually the first event that Max was put together for our media friends ever since we launched the brand. Not only the models, but we launched the brand and a few months after the pandemic hit. So we're, we're quite excited because um, we've been around for the past two years silently uh, during the pandemic already making people very happy with the buying experience and ownership of Maxos. So we thought that now that restrictions have lifted, we wanted to showcase one of our best-selling models. The test drive brought participants to the Subic Freeport, which along the way provides various road conditions and opportunities to demonstrate features as cruise control, infotainment and radio, and the easy maneuverability and stability of the GS50, especially along widening country roads. The entire duration of the event titled Ride with Max More, full Maxxis G50, was filled with activities meant to showcase features and competitive advantages of the Maxxis G50. The activities were carefully structured to allow participants to experience exceptional space, comfort, versatility, and convenience of the GS50 variants, the Premium, Elite, and Pro, and the newest addition, the Comfort, in various road conditions. We'd like to invite everyone to visit any of our, any of our current nine Maxxis dealerships nationwide. As also mentioned earlier, um, starting April 1, we are giving away huge savings and huge cash discounts to the consumers. So now is the best time to, to get an Axos. And our full lineup includes what we are showcasing here, which is our MPV. Give Maxus a chance, test drive, and you'll appreciate the comfort, the convenience features, and of course, the pricing. Isuzu Makati has reopened its doors after being refurbished and redesigned to meet the new Isuzu Outlet standard. Isuzu Makati is the first of seven dealerships of Isuzu Gen Cars to be given the iOS treatment. Among guests at the formal reopening of Isuzu Makati were Isuzu Philippines President Hajime Koso and Executive Vice President Shojiro Sakoda, as well as Gen Cars Chairman Dominic Edgar Cabangon and President Lerma Nakna. At the event, Isuzu Philippines President Koso explained the significance of iOS, saying that the new Isuzu Outlet standard is part of the company's push to achieve utmost customer success. This is aligned with Suzu's global dealership standards that gives importance not just to the sales side, but the overall customer journey starting from inquiry, sales, after sales, service, and their continuous return to our showroom. According to COSO, complying with IO standards will allow dealers to provide customer support at every step of the way. GenCars also plans to upgrade the facade and facilities of its other dealerships, Isuzu Nakaspi, Isuzu Naga, Isuzu San Pablo, Isuzu Patangas, Isuzu Patangas City, and Isuzu Santa Rosa to meet IOS standards. I would like to invite all our televiewers, especially those residing within Makati area, to please come and visit Isuzu Makati and check out its new modern facility and experience highly elevated customer experience provided by our export Isuzu sales and service executive, Maramin Suramatpo. Kagay and the Auto City need another Mitsubishi dealership. Mitsubishi Motor Philippines and Fast Auto World Philippine Corporation think it does. FAPC maintains an extensive dealership network in the Visayas and Mindanao, with dealerships in Mandawe, Cebu South, Mactan, Tacloban, Ormoc, Dumaguete, Tagbilaran, Butuan, Uzamis, and Gusa. According to FAPC Chairman Victor Chongbian, Fast Auto World is proud to showcase the new Mitsubishi Bulua dealership at second in Kagay and the Auto City. 
You have been a Mitsubishi stalwart for 35 years, and even in today's sales and marketing era, we still have the same fervor to welcome not just our loyal customer base, but also the next generation of car buyers. Located at Zone 6 along the Bulua National Highway, the new dealership sits on a 4,986 square meter lot with ample parking grounds, a showroom for 5 vehicles, a customer lounge, a parts and accessories counter, and a service center with 22 work bays. The new Chang'an CS35 Plus is banking on a surfeit of safety features to stand out in the crowded subcompact crossover market. The Chang'an CS35 Plus arrives bursting at the seams with active and passive safety tech features from anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, electronic stability control, hill hold control, hill descent control, tire pressure monitoring system, six airbags, child safety locks, and isofix anchors. That's not all. The Chang'an CS35 adds front collision warning, autonomous emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, round view camera, and monitor system. The new Chang'an CS35 Plus is available in three variants, light at 898,000 pesos, hype at 969,000 pesos, and lux at 999,000 pesos. Kia Philippines and iconic dealership IDI broke ground for the soon-to-rise Kia dealership in Bacoor. Expected to be fully operational by the third quarter of this year, Kia Bahor is strategically situated in the second largest city of Cavite, which is rapidly shifting from a largely agricultural community to a residential and commercial urban center. Kia Bahor branch will be IDI's fifth dealership and Kia's Philippines' 43rd. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, please don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 35th year of continuing service to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.